In chapter 10, part three, we want to use the ideal gas law. And so the ideal gas law is PV equals NRT. So in one example, tennis balls are usually filled with mixed air or nitrogen gas to a pressure above atmospheric to increase their bounce. If a tennis ball has a volume of 144 cubic centimeters and contains 0.33 grams of nitrogen gas, what is the pressure in atmospheres inside the ball at 24 degrees Celsius? So from here, we are going to use the equation PV equals NRT. And so now we need to figure out the values. We know we're going to look for pressure, and so pressure equals NRT over V. So let's look at what we know. So we know that the volume is 144 cubic centimeters. And we know that one cubic centimeter is one milliliter, and there are 1,000 milliliters in one liter. So we're going to end up with 0 0.144 liters. Temperature is 24 degrees Celsius plus 273.15 equals 297.15 Kelvin. So now we have two of the three variables. From here, we need to determine N. So we have 0 0.33 grams of N2. And so we need to convert that to moles. There are 28.02 grams in one mole of N2. And that gives us 0 0.01178 moles of N2. So from here, we can just start plugging this into our calculation. So we're going to start with N, which is 0 0.01178 moles of N2. R is 0 0.082.06 liters. Uh-oh, we're running out of space. Let's just move this down quite a bit. So let's start again. Pressure is going to be equal to NRT over V. The N in this case is 0 0.01178 moles of N2. The R is 0 0.08206 liters atmospheres mole Kelvin. The temperature in this case is 297.15 Kelvin divided by our volume of 0.144 liters. We can plug this into our calculator and we should get 1.99 atmospheres. Once we do this, we need to double check about our sig figs. So all of our values, or two of the three, only have two sig figs. So when we apply our significant figure rules, we will round to 2.0 atmosphere of pressure inside the tennis ball. So PV equals NRT is pretty versatile. In this case, we solved for pressure. Again, you could solve for any of these. So what happens when we don't want to just do this calculation over and over again? How else can we use this information? So we can modify the ideal gas law. So if we know that PV equals a constant, so this, this is going to assume everything else stays constant. So basically, we're first going to look at P1, V1 equals P2, V2. If we know that PV equals NRT. If we were to think about a, a system where PV equals NRT for situation one, and what about if we have situation two? It's where P1, P2, V2 equals N2, R, T2. So in this case, if we add the ones here, if we want to start to think about if the N and T stay the same, P1, V1 equals N, R, T, which equals P2, V2. Because N, R, and T will equally constant. So in this case, we could rewrite this as P1, V1 equals P2, V2. 
if we were to have done this, so this would be a equation that we're going to think about. If we did this and only the moles stayed the same, it's where you got P1 V1 divided by T1 equals N times R equals P2 V2 over T2. Then you could get an equation of P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 T2. You could also rewrite this to get P1 T1 equals P2 T2. So when can you use these relationships? As long as we are looking at a single substance where something is changing. We have a gas container and it goes from volume to something else. We don't tend to see the changes in moles, but you could under the right set of conditions where it's explicitly says that that information, it, like it's not changing. You'll also uh, come and count, encounter these types of equations under things where it'll sit, it won't provide enough information for you to use PV equals NRT in this case. So if the pressure inside an aerosol can is 1.5 atmospheres at 25 degrees Celsius, in the can, when the can is heated to 450 degrees Celsius, what is the pressure inside the can? So there's no way you could have used PV equals NRT. You could make some assumptions about this, but that would be really hard. So the volume is going to stay the same because the aerosol can stays the same. So if we have P1 is 1.5 atmospheres, T1 is going to be 25 degrees Celsius, so plus 273.15, and that gives us 298.15. So P2 is what we're going to look for, and T2 is 450 degrees Celsius plus 273.15. In this case, that's going to give us 723.15 Kelvin. So now we can set this up to where P1 T1 equals P2 T2. So now we can start plugging these in. You also have the opportunity to solve for them. So I will plug them in and solve. I will show you some other ways you could have done this. So P1 is 1.5 atmospheres divided by 298.15 Kelvin equals P2 divided by 723.15 Kelvin. In this case, P2 is going to give you 3.638 atmospheres. Once this, so our significant figures are going to be two, and so that's going to give us 3.6 atmospheres. You could have also set this up and isolated for P2 from the get-go. So that would be P1 T2 divided by T1 equals P2. So I just modified this in this way, and you will also get the exact same answer. Now, you might be asking yourself, mm, would it be possible to just plug this in? The unit should cancel, right? So what about if we set this up? So I'm going to make a little note here in red that says this is wrong. So that when you look back at your notes or if you look back through the video, you're not gonna be like, oh yeah, this works. So if you wanted to set this up with P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2, but no conversion. Since they cancel, it feels like it should work. Now, it doesn't work. So if you were to have set that up where we put 1.5 atmospheres divided by 25 degrees Celsius equals P2 divided by 450 degrees Celsius, you're going to get that P2 equals 27 atmospheres. So this doesn't work because the conversion to Kelvin is important for this calculation. So the reason it doesn't work is because it's addition. So if it were to be a multiplication, you could cancel it out on both sides. Because this conversion is temperature plus 273.15, you actually can't cancel it out. So this does not work. You will get the wrong answer every time. Now, there have been a lot of times where we can use the Celsius instead of 
Kelvin, a lot of times those are multiplied entities or if we're subtracting something. So please don't do this. But we could modify this in this way and use it. So other things that we can do with the PV equals nRT. We can use the density of air or solve for the density of air. We know that some different gases are heavier or lighter. We know that helium is lighter. We can see this in helium balloons. We also know that CO2 is heavier. Um, there are other gases like ether gas, often used in chemistry experiments, is quite heavy and tends to be known to creep along the floor. So we know that different airs have different densities. So we can use the molar mass, which is the scripty M of air, to determine its density of any given air sample. So molar mass, if we don't remember, is grams per mole. So what we've determined is that the density of air is N times the molar mass divided by the volume. So if we took PV equals NRT and density is grams per grams per mil or grams per liter more often in this case. So we know that that needs to be a mass divided by the volume. So the moles multiplied by scripty M, which is grams per mole. So you need here's mole. That's going to give us grams divided by the volume in this case would give you grams per liter. So this is a modification of this calculation to where the density equals the pressure times the molar mass over RT. So this is just a modification of this and you will get, so the pressure in atmospheres divided by the grams per mole, 0 0.08206 liters atmospheres mole Kelvin times Kelvin. When these units cancel out, you will end up with grams per liter which is the density. So let's work an example. So what is the density of carbon tetrachloride vapor at 714 torr and 125 degrees Celsius? So in this case, we need to do a couple of things. So the temperature is 125 degrees Celsius plus 273.15 Kelvin, and that's going to give us 398.15 Kelvin. So the pressure in this case is 714 torr. Now, I tend to use the same R value over and over. You could convert, go back and use a different R value. I'm going to use the 0 0.08206 liters atmospheres moles Kelvin. So I'm going to convert this using the established values. So there are 760 torr in one atmosphere. So this is gonna give us 0 0.939 atmospheres. So the density of a gas is the density multiplied by the, or the pressure, the molecular weight divided by the RT. So we need to determine the molecular weight. So script M is going to just be the molar mass. We earlier called this the molecular weight. And so in this case, that would be the sum of all of the atomic weights, which is 153.80 grams. So now we can plug this into our calculation. With a pressure of 0 0.939 atmospheres multiplied by 153.80 grams per mole, divided by 0 0.08206, liters, atmospheres, mole, Kelvin, and multiplied this by the temperature, which is 398.15 Kelvin. We're going to get a value when we plug this into our calculator, 4.42 grams per liter. So we can see that that is the correct number of significant figures. And we just were able to convert to grams per liter using the molar mass in this case. So we can solve for the density or use the density in a calculation and solve for something else. 
So one of the other things that we can do is start to utilize the balanced chemical equation. So if you remember back to chapters three and four and to some extent five, we could calculate based on the reactants, the amount of product or something else. So we can use this information to calculate stuff using PV equals NRT. Instead of just saying something pretty simple, we can start to use the other skills we've learned in chemistry. So airbags are inflated by nitrogen gas generated by the rapid decomposition of sodium azide, which is NaN3. Using this equation, two NaN3 solid decomposes into two uh, so moles of sodium solid plus three moles of sodium gas of nitrogen gas. If an airbag has a volume of 36 liters and is to be filled with nitrogen gas at 1.15 atmospheres and 26 degrees Celsius, how many grams of sodium azide must be decomposed? So we can start to think about this. We're going to use PV equals NRT. So let's set up some conversions. We have the volume of 36 liters. The temperature is 26 plus 273.15, which gives us 299.15 Kelvin. And the pressure is 1.15 atmospheres. So now let's go ahead and set this up. So we're solving for N. So N equals PV over RT. And so in this case, we have 1.15 atmospheres multiplied by a volume of 36 liters 0 0.08206 liters atmospheres mole Kelvin multiplied by the temperature of 299.15 Kelvin. So now we can plug this in and we're going to get 1.69 moles of N2. It feels like this is the end of this calculation. However, it asks us how many grams of sodium azide must be decomposed. So it's really asking us to use the balanced chemical equation to convert from nitrogen gas back to sodium azide. And so this is the same skills that we've talked about in chapter three. So using the stoichiometric ratio of three moles of N2 times two moles uh, to, uh, sodium azide. This multiplied by the molecular rate in one mole of sodium azide, which is 65.00 grams. In this case, once you plug all of this in, you're going to get 73 grams of sodium azide. Have to be decomposed. So it's really important that when we look at these equations, we realize what is it asking. So PV equals NRT tells us about the gas produced, but it doesn't tell us how many grams of sodium azide must be decomposed in order to convert to gram. In order to convert to sodium azide, we have to use the stoichiometric coefficients. So let's look at another example. So when octane is combusted in a combustion engine, the products are carbon dioxide and water. The gas tank for a Dodge Neon contains 12 gallons of gas, which contains 0 0.821 kilograms of octane. If the car is driven on a cool day at 18.2 degrees Celsius with a pressure of 0.928 atmospheres, what is the volume of carbon dioxide that is produced? So this has a lot of different information. So there are a couple of things we can start with. We know that our pressure is 0 0.0928 atmospheres. The temperature is 18.2 degrees Celsius plus 273.15, which gives us 291.35 Kelvin. So we're looking for volume. So the thing that we're going to use, we need to figure out the N equals question mark. So we're going to take our 0 0.821 kilograms and convert that to grams. In one kilogram, there's 1,000 grams, which gives us 821 grams. We're going to take our 821 grams of C8H18, and now we're going to convert that into moles. So there are 114.26 
grams and one mole of C8H18. And that gives us 7.1854 moles. In this case of octane, C8H18. But it's asking about the volume of carbon dioxide. So the moles needs to correspond to the moles of carbon dioxide. So now we're going to take our 7.1854 moles of C8H18 and convert two moles of carbon dioxide. So there are two moles of octane for every 16 moles of CO2 produced, which this gives us 57.483 moles of CO2. Now, in this case, now we can be able to put this value here and start to use PV equals NRT. So in this case, I'm gonna just slide this over this way so we can kind of see our work. We know that PV equals NRT. We're solving for volume, which is NRT over P. So we're gonna take our 57.483 moles of CO2, multiply that by 0 0.08206 liters, atmospheres, mole, Kelvin, multiply that by the temperature, which is 291.35 Kelvin, divide this by our pressure, which is 0 0.928 atmospheres. We can plug this in and we're going to get a volume of 1,480.9 liters using our sig figs, which if we were to slide back is going to give us three sig figs, so we're going to get 1,480 liters. Now, you may have been a little distracted by this 12.0 gallons of gas. It turns out that that is extraneous information and doesn't actually tell you anything. So converting gallons to liters is going to not give you any additional information because it's asking about the volume of carbon dioxide produced, which is not related to the volume of the gas tank.